Hello guys and welcome to the Stats Report highlight for the 1st of March 2016. For this week, lead producer Brian Hicks, lead designer Peter Nespesny, and lead gameplay programmer Miroslav Menina will let us in on the details regarding the CLE, the new engine plus renderer, and upcoming plans and work for the damage system and enforced script, among other things. As mentioned as a high possibility, we ended up passing our internal goal for putting 060 into consumers' hands. This was expected as a high chance. We're of course working hard on getting it ready and onto experimental branch as soon as possible. Our work currently is focused on optimization of the performance inside major cities in Chernorus. New Chernogorsk has caused us some performance hiccups we want to resolve to an acceptable playable frame rate. The engine team has a daunting task ahead of them, focusing on the last few hurdles to unlock the capabilities of the renderer while still combating and improving legacy engine scene management. With triple areas in DirectX 9 area dipping as low as the mid-teens in some situations, we consider it critical to isolate those areas and ensure we can hold a stable 30 FPS in DirectX 11. Globally, frame rates on average can be in the 40 to 60 range. So obviously our focus right now is in those major cities. It is key to keep in mind, as said many times before, this is just the first iteration. In addition to continuing bug fixing on into beta and the 1.0 release, the new renderer technology will open up many new particle effects to the design team, and we'll be working with GPU manufacturers for cross-testing to isolate areas in which hardware-specific optimizations can be made. Tasks completed, implementation of all base renderer features, simul weather and true sky implementation. Current focus, optimization of major cities, dynamic lights, finalization of new renderer settings, UI and options, implementation of new UI, bug fix, bug fix, bug fix. Hicks is confident that a global increase in frame rate playability, as well as a huge upgrade in the visuals of DayZ, are going to be well worth the work that has gone into the part of the Infusion engine. While Point 6.0 obviously focuses most heavily on implementing the engine's new renderer, Point 6.0 also has continued iteration on the central economy, something Hicks thinks many people don't realize is very crucial to the DayZ experience. With the audit mentioned in previous status reports complete, as well as changes to the tanking for weapons, changing to vehicle spawn points, initial attachments, and finally, weapons are both spawning with random attachments and a chance to spawn with magazines that have a random amount of ammo inside them. Beyond Point 6.0, the team's next major update's focus is primarily on the animation system and player controller. For the end user, it is important to understand these large engine changes have been holding back fixes on a lot of legacy issues with the title, as well as much larger overall changes to how DayZ plays, including, but not limited to DayZ's new user actions, something that Hicks feels paired with the renderer, and new UI completes a three-part massive change to how DayZ plays. In addition, the gameplay programming team's work on the new damage system, which will be explained a bit more in detail below by lead gameplay programmer Merrick. The members of the programming team focusing on the central economy also continue to work on the deployable version of the CLE and database structure, for use by both mod authors and private server operators alike, as well as functionality for Daisy's local offline mode. On the early access community side, our form transition is complete, and daisy.com forums are back online. As some of you may know, the feedback tracker is offline while we transition to a new software option for it. This shouldn't be down too much longer, as it is critical to providing an outlet to those testing DayZ's development builds to communicate the issues they encounter while doing so. We know that members of the community have wanted to see us increase our changes in the format of our unbound communication, and that too has received some love this month. We've done some restructuring in the processes behind these, as well as the structure of responsibilities. We're hoping that over the coming month, you'll all enjoy the changes in this area, and we'll be keeping an eye on your reactions. New user action framework in Enforce Script has been completed, and while all actions are being rewritten into it, they rely on a connection to the new player and new animation system. We have also looked at crafting processes currently used in-game, and usage of activities available in DayZ, such as preparing fireplace and cooking, creating electrical system, construction of non-portable structures, vehicle maintenance, growing crops, placement of objects, weapons handling, interaction with objects in the world, doors barricading, and others. With such wide spectrum of different activities which were continuously implemented through the development and honestly most of them ended in prototype, unfinished or experimental state, it's easy that their usage can become inconsistent, especially when we were trying different approaches to it over time. Now during general rewrite of scripted game systems and mechanics to enforce script, and overall heading towards beta release, it's a great time to overhaul everything which makes sense to overhaul, and can be reasonably achieved in a tight time frame. Our aim is to bring as much consistency as we can into very different behaviours to unify and simplify them, thus they become much more clear and understandable to players. Peter is very proud that vision of physicality, tangibility and strong vision feedback through the whole game and its actions and activities is becoming the reality which is, to be honest, quite unique in games nowadays. 
For example, you can look forward to reinforcing the rule of hands even in crafting, which become really close to user actions, or stretching the functionality of quick slots beyond their usual behavior seen in games. For great experiences, it's immersion that matters. The Legacy Armor Damage System was designed only for ranged weapons, which means that every hit was an explosion. But when we've added close range weapons, we found that this system isn't suitable, and it's difficult to balance properly. It was hard to set up how much damage will be applied to different parts of a character's body, and how this damage will be modified when characters has different types of armor, and so on. We've decided the best solution is to write a completely new system for this, which will allow us to have several different types of hits and wounds, which will allow us to add more game features and easily balance them. Together with this, we're changing the process of damage synchronization between client and server, so this new damage system will be more efficient for server performance and network traffic, and be secure against the possibility of cheating. The new damage system is now pushed to our designers, who are creating the initial setup, at which point we will begin testing internally. The team is also working on performance and network optimizations and bug fixing some major inventory issues. And that's all guys for this week's status report highlight for the 1st of March 2016. And if you didn't notice the picture in the background or from the thumbnail, it's a new nighttime screenshot from the upcoming DirectX 11 renderer. Oh, and finally, here's a screenshot of a metal rusted caravan. No idea what its uses may be yet. Let me know in the comments below what you think. As always, I recommend you read the status reports in full for yourselves for the most amount of information that it holds. All links will be in the description, as well as for Daisy TV for your latest Daisy news and information. And I'll see you peeps next time.